this is Philip and I'm here to show you my new plugin called HDRI Comp. It's all about high dynamic range imaging. You've probably mm, heard about it, seen people take multiple snapshots with cameras, combining them into one image, then of course tone mapping so that we can have an image of greater brightness than from a single exposition that will actually contain pixels way brighter than clean white or compressing them back into the tonal range of between 0 and 1 to get that extra mm, detail in the image. Now that's simple and that's popular. My idea was to actually do it with uh, two camcorders and make actually an HDRI movie. So the idea behind this is using two cameras. For now I've only figured out how to do it with two cameras. And since stereoscopy is so popular right now, I used a stereoscopic rig but set the interocular distance in it to zero. So basically both of the cameras were recording the same image. There was no parallax. And then I put both of the camcorders into automatic uh, exposure. They found their exposure. Both images were pretty close to each other. Then I locked the exposure and lowered the exposure on one camera by two stops and heightened the exposure on the second camera also by two stops, thus getting a exposure difference of four stops between the two images. So what did we get? Two images and we walked through a corridor. The image from the highlight camera, let's call it, was exposed so that we have detail in all the highlights. Of course it's underexposed in other areas. The second image was the exposure for the dark areas with totally blown highlight areas. Now what we want to do is combine these two shots, these two exposures, into a single image. So we apply the HDRI Comp plugin and we apply it to the footage with higher exposure, so with the overblown highlights. Right off the bat, we see a selection of suggested highlights that we will want to replace. So uh, the full highlights cut is basically the setting that allows you to select where is the threshold that will tell the plugin that below this threshold we use the current image, above this threshold we use a different exposure image. The different exposure image we select an input to, that's the background low exposure. Now nothing happens because I want to show you the zero highlights cut. It's basically a fall off. So everything above full highlights cut will get a full information from the lower exposure footage. Everything below the zero highlights cut will get full information from the current higher exposure footage. Everything in between will be in a blend between them. And so if you move the sliders further and further you can see uh, that we are actually getting a soft selection here. right? So you can imagine that's used for blending the two images together and removing artifacts. So let's back that up to one, So because we really need a hard edge uh, for this right now. Okay, let's leave it like this. Now, what uh, images can we view? The original, the one we applied the image to, the highlights later, layer, so mm, the layer that we will take the highlights detail from. Highlights matte, that's obvious. And now, final compressed and final raw. Final compressed will recreate, mm, will try to recreate the original tonal range of the scene and then compress it into the range of 0, 1. That will result in a normal 8-bit mm, and 16-bit image that will have less contrast uh, than the the original image, but it will have detail everywhere. Uh, as opposed to uh, this, the final raw 32-bit image will have no compression and will actually exceed the range uh, of 0 to 1. So let's go with final compressed. And now you can see that in the whole of the high exposure 
uh, footage, we see the low exposure footage, so the mm, highlights and details uh, layer. Uh, as you can see, we have a uh, problem with different uh, luminance of the two uh, layers. That's where exposure difference comes in. That's basically a multiplier that you have to set to a value that will make these two uh, layers match as close as possible. Look at these edges here, look at here, look here, look here. That is the reason why I went and wanted to keep a hard edge between lowlights and highlights because this allows us to make a better guess of the value of the multiplier. Of course, it looks okay, the seam isn't very clean right now as you can see, but that's where we go with a uh, zero highlights cut. Just get really lower, we have a blend in between the two, and voila! This is our layer. Now you might actually ask, what's the point of this mode, right? I mean, this looks almost exactly as the lower exposition layer, so why not use the lower exposition layer? Well, remember when I said that we might actually use it as a source for more image data? Let's apply a color correction. Uh, on this, a simple gamma curve that will pull out a lot from the shadows. If we use the original layer, you see you've got a lot of noise and discoloration, and since this was an 8 bit image, uh, you should see banding all around. Now, if we enable our new version, you can see it's a lot more cleaner. Right? From this to this. We've made such a huge uh, gamma correction and uh, the image still manages to look good. Okay, so this is the first format, the compressed format. What about the second one? The final raw. Okay, before, after, you might actually say that it doesn't really have much of a difference on an image but here's the thing before we apply the filter if you go here you can see here in the info palette that these whites are overblown it's 111 if we enable the filter now you can see that these actually have higher values that we still have data data there as you can see, we have a color of 1.5, 2, 2, that's really big. Well, let's try to bring it down. Bring it down, bring it down, bring it, oh my god, look, we still have detail here, after bringing the color down. So that is actually real HDRI imaging. And just remember, for this to work, you absolutely have to work in 32 bits. If you switch to uh, 8 bit, you'll get this. You need 32 bits for this to work. So, if we manage to create a real moving HDRI image, what could this be used for? Well, how about shooting a chrome ball and using it for lighting in a 3D application, we would have an animated HDRI environment map. This is blasphemy! This is madness! No, no, that's actually not a bad idea. It's cool, it's possible, that's what we did. Okay, so look at that. A real horn ball recorded on two camcorders. We have an animated chrome ball. Look at this, that's a real HDRI image. Look at these values here. We can actually grade it down and you will see the sun and sky and everything. Yes! All we have to do now is unwrap it. Now I will not tell you how I unwrap this because it's really not something I would like to share. I s I'm still at the level of figuring out how to do that in, in a nice and clean way. Uh, I use a projection mapping in th a 3D application for this. 
so that's really really a uh, well workaround rather than a workflow but look at this we have a spherical real HDRI environment map now the question now is what can we do with this let's do something cool so we did what any geeks would do we built a robot and insert it into the scene so just look at this this is a clean reflection pass uh, you can see the entire environment reflecting in it and look at the difference between the beginning frames and the final frames the image that mm, the robot is reflecting is completely different there's a reason for that because he's coming from a sunny room into a dark corridor and you would have to fake that with multiple static mm, HDRI maps and now we've got that for free that's how awesome let's see what the final robot looked like say that that looks pretty cool once again he begins to walk in a sunny bright uh, room and then slowly gets into a darker area and into the corridor that's everything from the HDRI map now let's look at the final image and what it looks like now that is pretty awesome like I said it's basically free all the reflection data is from the map all the well not all the lighting information is from the map or I did use a directional light for shadow casting but yeah basically with that mm, environment data that we gathered uh, from the room ball mm, all of this was just a joy to do and yes in the background you actually see the compressed original image remember this and the compressed version you might want to ask again why the hell would you want to do uh, the compressed version is that so much of a difference well the answer is this image with all the data in the highlights and in the shadows just grades it grades really well you can achieve any look you would ever want and that also was the reason we want to see if from two cheap camcorders we can get an image that will look well, basically really cinematic and I think we've achieved that so there you go this is uh, my new um, HDRI comp plugin and if you already have a stereoscopic rig there is no reason why you shouldn't try this you'll be amazed by the images you can get